Hello, my delicious co-creators. Lilu here at the Bali Spirit Festival with Michael. We're going to speak about the water. Ooh, and how water ignites the these deep memories within us. Huh? You've been you've been interested. You've been practicing and uh, teaching Watsu for a while. I've been practicing since 2001 and teaching since 2009. Mm. So quite a few years. And uh, I keep returning to it as one of the things that I, that I love to do and love to share. Um, it's quite a, a unique kind of, um, we can say modality, but way of caring for someone, yeah. way of um, supporting someone. So what we do, for people who don't know, uh, what we do is in Watsu or aquatic body work or of the many kinds, there's actually many modalities of aquatic body work as well, as you know, uh, and I specialize in one called healing dance, aquatic body work, which is kind of more intuitive um, and uh, flowing. But basically what happens in Watsu or aquatic body work is a receiver floats on their back in the water and then the giver, therapist, glides their body through the water. So applying movement and stretch. Yeah. So it ends up, for the therapist, uh, let's say practitioner, it ends up being uh, Tai Chi-like movements. And for the receiver, it's almost like yoga-like movements. Lots of, uh, lots of movements that, that um, almost resemble yoga poses. And what happens is that it, it frees up the joints, and especially the spine. It frees up holding in the body and holding in the breath as well. So the emphasis is on freeing the body and on freeing the breathing. Mm. And when we do that, it also frees emotions. Yeah. It's almost like um, emotions are or can be stuck in the body, almost like um, debris and ice mm. or something like that. You know, I w if, we, if there's a strong, um, if it were like in a trauma, for example, there's a strong feeling, often it's too strong to really um, integrate. Mm -hmm. So it's like the chi is locked, the energy is locked in parts of our body and to, this helps because obviously when we're in water, all of a sudden it's, it's, it's easier to unlock, no? Yeah, so usually it's warm water. Yeah. So it's like stepping into a bath and immediately there's a feeling of, you know, release and let go. Yeah, so the warm water facilitates that. Water also being the kind of element of emotion so that, uh, you know, like like water, the emotions flow and move. Yeah, so water is known as the, the element of emotion. Mm. So when we're being um, relaxed or relaxing in the warm water, then these, this, let's say, kind of like the debris or the stuck emotions, uh, it's held in the body, held in its issues. Just like a, a, any any person can probably relate to the way that we hold tension in the shoulders. For example, when we get stressed, sometimes there might even or be holding the mic too long. Or holding the mic, yeah. So there's ways. There's ways of. Uh, do you want to change hands with the mic? Okay, <laughs> okay. 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 So um, there are ways that repetitive movements mm -hmm. will strain muscles or tense muscles, and there are ways that emotions will also start to clench as we as we contract with experience rather than, say, expand or open or relax into experience. And the same thing will happen with emotion when we uh, limit or hold or suppress or contract uh, our emotion. Maybe it's not it's not convenient or we don't know how to express. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's... Uh, whatever the emotion is, whether it's grief, sadness, anger, frustration, we, we start to sometimes lock up in the body, especially lock up in the breathing. Yeah, but how, how does it work then for past lives or past memories or ancient memories locked in that we're not even aware of? Like, how does that work then? So there's, there's one level where we can release emotions that are more... Um, uh, very specifically tied to, to memory, tied to specific incidences. Uh, sometimes it could be even a joyful memory, you know. Um, we don't know what's going to come up in the session. It's very individual and it could be a sadness, a grief, uh, a, a joy that's released, but it's something that's been suppressed. Um, and as they say, that's kind of like the thawing ice because as the movement kind of relaxes the muscles and as the stretch relaxes the muscles, then so what becomes available is not only that the body gets freed up, but also the emotion gets freed up. 
So that's one level. Mm-hmm. And then there's another way that something is happening that's almost on a, I want to say primordial, I don't know if that's the, the right level, but let's say prenatal mm-hmm. level. So there are, let's, let's say, womb-like movements. There are womb-like holds that naturally recall the feeling of being in the womb, that naturally recall the safety of being in the womb. There are other movements that recall maybe even the movement of the, of the sperm. Mm-hmm. Or the mermaid. Or the mermaid. Yeah, or any kind of... Uh, you remember being a mermaid, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. And when so, I did it, immediately my body started yeah. doing it. And you say, oh my God, I'm a mermaid. <laughs> like, How cool. Yeah. And so there's ways that we recall um, natural organic shapes. And it might even be a memory of past life, past uh, evolution, mm. past layers of evolution. Transgenerational, I mean, things that were stuck in the family too, maybe, that we're carrying. Sometimes people will remember... Um, family members who've passed there might be spirit guides who show up that's that's the rare case and it's usually someone who's already quite kind of clairvoyant with those sense those things that, that actually there's there's someone there there's a presence there but most normally it'll be emotions and memories that come up and then there's another level that where it's kind of beyond the conscious mind because there are just organic movements and shapes that we might make as as a cell you know, as, as we start to, to pulse, and there's a kind of a pulsing movement that is so innate in us, it's so familiar, that it might even start to trigger that natural movement inside of us, this kind of pulsing. Or maybe it's a spiral, or maybe it's a snake-like movement through the water. It's the kundalini rising. And maybe it's the kundalini. So we, the, what happens is that those natural movements are are organic. They're, remi- they're reminiscent of movements that are the earliest, earliest memories of this life and perhaps other lives. I don't go into that because I don't know about my past lives. Uh, that to me, that's an assumption uh, that, that is probably true. Uh, I don't work much with past lives, but I can go to the step of knowing that uh, I had this prenatal life. And in that prenatal life, I had prenatal experiences. And, um, and sometimes, you know, even prenatal trauma. So it's, or birth trauma. So it's actually fascinating as we work in the water that these natural memories are kind of, they surface. And there's a way that the water buffers our reaction to those things. Where in a trauma, where in a traumatic kind of situation, it's too much for the body to bear or too much for the psyche to bear. So it's held or suppressed. But in the water, we have such a soothing environment that we feel safe, we're relaxed, we feel held, supported, safe, and, and safe to be exactly as we are. How about those mystical experiences? Because I remember doing this in, the, like in Hawaii, and it felt like I was in the, not only in my mother's womb, but like just like in the mother's like universe totally and floating in this cosmic experience it's totally amazing so this is one thing that's very special about being in the water there are other ways to access that but it's one very let's say kind of instant way you know just add just add water in, you know this instant transcendental experience so first it's meditative and then there'll be ways that it's transcendental it transcends our normal experience so we might feel Wow, I feel relaxed, I feel safe, and I can trust. And not only I can trust this person, but I can trust the process of life. So it becomes, it becomes more of a metaphorical experience that I'm being held not by this person, but I'm being held by life, that I'm supported by life, that I'm safe, that I'm connected with life, that I was never separate from anything. So it becomes a, a deep knowing, and I would even say like connection with, with source, mm. with connection of the source of life. Mm. So <laughs> it's one of those very rare and beautiful practices that can bring that a memory, can bring that awareness of connection with life itself, yes. which somehow 
can get lost otherwise yeah. and that we don't always remember. There's also those experiences some people report having like uh, big laughter and seeing how much we're in a cosmic joke. I mean, this huge, uh, like yeah. just laying down after that and then the experience continues. It's not just like it stops in the water. So there's a, a, a session time and that, and that might be anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half or longer, depending on what's happening in the session. And then there's a the kind of integration. There's, yeah. there's the way that that all kind of settles and integrate. So usually after a session, I encourage people to uh, to journal, to be with themselves, because the process is still happening. It's like we unlocked a process. Mm -hmm. So it's still ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't know what it will unlock. We don't know whether it will unlock, like I said, like a pain, a grief, uh, like a sorrow that we finally feel safe to feel. Mm -hmm or allowed to feel, or maybe it's a joy that we finally give ourselves permission to feel. Yeah. You know, because sometimes, strangely enough, we'll even suppress joy, mm -hmm. we'll even suppress laughter, like in school or home or whatever. It's not, it's not okay sometimes. For, so then we have even that laughter held inside, you know? So we don't know what happens as that unwinds. And as we, we take a bigger perspective and we see some of the life circumstances, some of the life situations from, a, let's say, a, um, a bird's eye view, uh, like, a, yeah, like an overview. Mm -hmm. And one woman said, she said, I, I, I rested her by the side of the pool after the session, session. She opened her eyes. She said, you know, there's nothing wrong. And she said, and there never was. That's huge. That's huge. To know, to know the rightness of the world, to know the perfection in life that is just pervasive, even if we forget it. So that's a recalling of that perfection. It's a remembering of that perfection. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I tell you, wow, I can drop into that. I can drop into that knowing. So it's, um, it's a, I would say it's a remembrance. Yeah, it's a remembrance of perfection. It's a, uh, that's why it's like, wow, all this that I thought was, uh, uh, the life that I thought was against me is actually for me and with me. So it's kind of like we enter the river of life. You know, we enter the water and we feel, oh, I'm, I'm flowing with this life and life is flowing with me. So we, we, we might even laugh at some of our struggle. You know? It becomes quite funny, you know? I, that's what I noticed with people that are waking up and, you know, on this journey is that it becomes, it's quite, we, there's, there's, there's a lot to laugh at. There's, there's a way that um, I could take myself too seriously. Mm. There's a way that I could make my problems so big. And more and more, what I find is that I can actually see the humor in what's going on and I can I can um, you know we have a we have a, a kind of running joke in our house that there's no problems in the kitchen mm -hmm. it hap it kind of is it's a long story but we have everything we need in the kitchen so I said oh no there's no problem in the kitchen and then so I said I said quick let's get in the kitchen because we were having a little bit of a problem with my friend there I said hey let's get in the kitchen you know, so we, we suddenly make this kitchen like, okay, that's a safe zone. I say, can we extend the safe zone to the sofa too? So we realize that we can play with our reality a little bit. And humor, if we, if we can actually find the humor in situations, we can say, yes, this is happening. We can say that this, um, this little glitch is happening. This little bump uh, is happening. But we don't have to take it too seriously, you know. And, and it's not all that's happening. It's this, and there's this whole huge life that's my life, and this whole huge life that's our life, and this whole huge life that's the life. And this is just happening now. And maybe we could even start the day over. We did that today with my friend. She woke up, she said, you know, I, I uh, feel like crying. I said, I could just stay in bed and cry all day. And I said, or maybe you could come out and sing. And so she started singing today in the afternoon at this festival. And she started to cry. And I said, that's the other option. You can come out and sing and, and cry. So we can, we can just laugh, actually, about the whole 
mess that we find ourselves in sometimes, you know? And that we're that and we're beyond that. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we can zoom out of it yeah. and say, I'm, that's happening in me, but I'm also beyond that. And to know that we're supported, and I think that's the great gift of water, just as you said, to, to, to know that we're supported, that we're not alone, and that there's not that much to do, and that we can, we're we all interconnected. And There's another option, basically, that stay there in our little me, myself and I. Yeah, I think that's one of the, the magical things, as you say, about the water, because it is it's buoyant. Mm. So we feel buoyed or supported by the water. And, um, you know, we can also feel supported on the earth. We can rest and say, wow, the earth is holding me. You know, I have no, like, if I'm down on the ground, there's nowhere else to fall. Yeah. And so sometimes I laugh. It's like, yeah, you know, when I have the moments where I'm just, like, flattened. Yeah. Well, I'm down on the ground. And there's nowhere else to fall. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere else to go. I'm just here. I'm just down on the ground. That's all. And there's nowhere but up. Mm -hmm. You know? And when we're in the water, yes, we feel, we feel supported. Uh, we might even feel guided. There's a lot of clarity that comes with the water. Just like when we bathe in the water, the water, the water brings a lot of clarity. It brings a lot of knowing, and it's not a know. It's not a this kind of knowing. You know what I mean? It's it's a it's a deep knowing. It's not a thought process. It's a happening. And intuitive, as you said. Intuitive. Intuitive. So sometimes we'll find um, intuitive movements in the water. Sometimes the body will start to make those kind of, uh, let's say, prenatal kind of movements. And like I said, maybe like a, a pulse or a snake, or maybe a spiral, maybe like a starfish, these kind of, you know, as I grow limbs, then my body does this. And so I might find myself in the water repeating that movement and finding my body just doing it because it's so intrinsic and organic. So there's, there's an intuitive movement that's very healing. So when, so when we work with someone in the water, we try to notice those impulses and dance and relate to those impulses and encourage those impulses so there's when when we feel honored like that there's a deep healing mm -hmm. when when we can be ourselves so truly and fully and we're honored in being ourselves and instead of being made to fit in a box be, having to appear or be some way but just being ourselves exactly as we are in the moment and tapping into a deep truth in a way a truth of a, a, a prenatal truth, yeah. a prenatal connection. Yeah. And I feel for, for, for tall people or people that have issues with their weight, it's particularly great because it frees up that whole kind of thing of heaviness and of larger, That's taking a lot of space. And then it, it helped me to liberate some memories I've never been able to liberate otherwise. So, because I'm so tall, you know, and I have this, this whole thing about this incarnation being in this body. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful gift. In the water, we find space. We feel almost like we're in the in the sky, maybe in the ocean, but maybe in the sky, like we're flying. And then we, wow, we have space, and I can be as big as I am. I don't have to make myself small. I can be as big as I am, and I'm allowed, and I'm uh, beautiful, even like this. I, and so, wow, let me find that space. And so, it's a lot about opening up into the space, and and also the the spaciousness that I am as a person, the, 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 the grandeur that I am as a person, opening up into that space as well. So that's one of the things I found. I've, I've attended, um, you know, I, I've, I've taught a lot over the years. I've attended many water uh, trainings. And that's one of the things I've found is that it's very expansive, it's very opening. And if there's one particular practice that has opened me personally, it's the water. It's the water work. Yeah. The way it, it, it unravels, uh, the way it unwinds, and all of the things that we've held, it's like that, um, is it Maya Angelou, who, who says that we're, we're not afraid of our uh, uh, smallness, we're afraid of our greatness? Yeah. More Marian Williamson. Marian Williamson, yeah. okay. So, um, Maya said it in her, her own words, which I love, like, the heart is the only thing you can trust. I love when she says that, but anyway, that's a whole other topic, but it's kind of interesting. Yeah. So there's, yeah, we are afraid. About it. So there's a, way, there's a way that we can let ourselves be, be big. I mean, that's just a metaphor anyway. They would say, well, I can't be as big as I am. I have to be, uh, I have to diminish myself. There, 
that is, I have to fit into to this. And we try to fit in in so many ways. And then finally, in a, in a, in a healing session like the water work, we find I can be as big as I am. Like that, I can, uh, what a great feeling. Yeah, and I can be, and as, as I said, not only as big as I am in body, but as big as I am as a person. And so there's a whole freedom that opens up. And um, probably the biggest thing is being at home in our own skin, being at home in ourselves, um, because that's not always reinforced or encouraged by our families, by our cultures, by our, by our teachers, because it rather might be enforced to conform uh, so this is a journey that probably people who are watching are on is becoming more and more themselves, oh, being uh, comfortable in their own skin and then just shining and just blossoming. Yeah. And that's what, for me, that's what this life journey is about, is shining and blossoming and sharing and serving. And, and that's, that's, what we're, that's what you're doing, that's what I'm doing, that's what hopefully everyone out there is doing. Um, so the water is, is facilitating that. It's a great healer, it's a great teacher. And the person who's gliding through the, gliding the person through the water, the, 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 gliding the body through the water, the person through the water, is the facilitator mm. and the water is collaborating. So in our trainings, in our sessions, we give thanks to the water. Mm. Yeah. I thought today, uh, you know, we're 70% water. That means we're only 30% not water. Mm -hmm. So when we're in the water, we're really coming home in a certain kind of a way. So, you know, we give, yeah, beautiful music, we give thanks to the water, you know, for that, that nourishment, that healing, that clarifying, that, that, uh, that reminder, that remembrance. Beautiful. Well, thank you for this delicious, passionate, awesome interview. Thank you. Thank you, too. <laughs> And thank you to you, my delicious co-creators, for listening. Please share this video. Beautiful teaching, beautiful wisdom. A lot of love here, too. Thank you for this blessing. Definitely something to try. Wow. Amazing. And to learn and to teach. Yeah. We can watch on your site. I'm sure there's plenty of dates. Yeah, so my website is uh, inspiringrelaxation.com. Yeah. And I'm doing trainings uh, in Australia, around Asia. Where are you from? You look more uh, Dutch then. My ancestry is partially Dutch. Uh, people mistake me for, well, I mean, not mistake me, but uh, <laughs> I, did, I didn't grow up in Holland. I grew up in the States. And then I moved around the last 20 years, so my accent has been softened, mm -hmm. probably by the water too. Yeah, so there's, a, anyway, there are trainings that I'm, I'm conducting ongoing, and that's on my website, inspiringrelaxation.com. Uh, there's a beautiful uh, video of, of the work, and it's on the, the Five Elements channel, Five Elements Bali, and it's uh, water healing. So it's a video called Water Healing on Five Elements uh, Bali, and you can, see that they can see, you can see that on YouTube, and that's a very, very well done, beautiful uh, uh, film of, of the work. Delicious. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching. Big, big kisses from the beautiful Bali Spirit Festival. Bye.